Next, we're going to do binomial heaps with a lazy union operation. So why do we do this? In part one, we saw what is a binomial heap, what are the worst case running times of the various operations. Part two, we did amortized analysis of the operations, of the running time of the operations, and saw that insert can be actually do, be done in constant amortized time. We will now want to also get a faster union operation, namely in constant time. How do we achieve this? By doing union differently, or actually not doing any work when we do union. So instead of having union do what we had before, so building a nice binomial heap, we simply take the two heaps that we should be combining and instead just concatenate the lists. At that point, of course, we do not have a binomial heap anymore, but then we really just want to have a binomial heap when we do delete min, because when we do, do a bit delete min, with a minimum we can still find quickly, but then to have the structure available to then find the new minimum quickly, um, we will want to have a binomial heap. So the delete min will essentially then build our binomial heap, the unions will not. What is the advantage? It has the advantage that we do not put in the extra work to maintain a binomial heap at all times, but instead only do it when we need it in the delete min. This sounds a bit strange, just a quick example. So let's assume we're inserting lots of elements one by one, and then normally we would get this nice binomial heap structure. With a lazy union, the insert simply concatenates a new element with the previous elements into a long list. Yep. So after n inserts, we just have a list, long list of elements. When we then do delete min, okay, the minimum we can still find quickly because we have a min pointer. But after that, to be able to find the next smallest and so on, then we would like to have a binomial heap. But that means we will let the de delete min build the binomial heap. And that, of course, with a list of n elements, takes longer than o order log n time, that would take linear, will take linear time at that point. But amortized, we wish can show that this is O of log n. Intuitively, in my example, the reason why amortized it's O of log n is because to get into this bad situation, I first have to have n insert operations. So I can charge it to those. Okay, but let's get started. Lazy union, just once more. If I have, for instance, if this is one of my binomial heaps and my other one is maybe hmm, this one, lazy union simply concatenates the list, does nothing else. Let's take a look at the various operations. So first of all, in terms of data structure, uh, it's important that our list now is a doubly linked list, so that's just a technicality. And we are going to maintain a min pointer so that at any time we can actually easily get the minimum. So the operations make an empty heap and linking to trees, they, those are just as before. For the union, as I said, we only concatenate the lists. And then, of course, each list has the individual minimum. We take the minimum of those two and point to that one. Insert is also as before, make a heap of size one is a new element and then do union but the union now is a lazy union so we just places one element at the very beginning let's have a look at this by example i insert an element with key five let's say i insert another element with key seven then i just get a list of seven and five and with four then i just have four five and seven each time i have to make sure i maintain the minimum so the minimum of the two lists, of in this case of four, and for the other list it was five. I can do that in constant time. Let's assume I'm now union then this with this uh, heap here, or with this tree in this case, it's only, but it's a small heap. Then I, I just concatenate. So this could look like that, or still the minimum. A union with this is two six. Again, I just concatenate. That is insert. Very simple. The delete min. And delete min is now where we do all of the work. Naturally, we will need to remove the min. And now we have to put all of this together into a binomial heap. How do we do this? We create an array 
we have I have an entry for each size, so for each degree of a tree. So for that, I need an area of size log n rounded down plus one. In my example, n is six. I need an area of size three. What I'm now going to do is simply trees of uh, degree zero. I'm going to put at index zero. Trees of degree one at index one. Trees of degree two at index two. Yeah. So the, I would be starting, for instance, with a six. The six I would put here, and then ten, eleven I would put here. Yeah, and so on, I would like to say, but and so on. The four would also want to go here. But then, at this point, as soon as I have two elements, I place them to the next position, and if there's already something there, again. So essentially, I do the linking here on the way. Let me do that in detail. So I insert the trees of degree i, index i. If there already was something there, so if a i is non-empty, I'm going to link those two trees and insert them at a i plus one. And this, of course, is recursive. If there's something there, I again link. Here, once more, the example six goes at index zero because I six we have degree zero, ten eleven index one, four goes at index zero. I do link between four and six. This is now a tree with degree one, so it should go to a one. There's already something there. I do link and move it to a two. So this is how things would look like. And then the five comes here, five and seven, I link, move to a one. And this is all that I will do. So that is a delete min. Take a close look at that to make sure that it's clear. Uh, of course, as a very last step now, now I have in my array the trees that I want to have. I still put them into a list and I should, if I didn't do it yet, also set the min point on you. Let's do an amortized analysis. I will offer you two accounting method, potential method. Choose the one you like or do both with me. Accounting method. So the idea is to save two coins per tree. If you remember what we did in the simple amortized analysis of binomial heaps, they had one coin per tree. Now I need two. And we're going to see why. Making an empty heap, I will simply have an amortized cost of one uh, because I'm actually only, I mean, I do work, but I don't need any coins because the heap is empty, so there's not actually a tree. If I link, so how does it look like if I link? I have two trees, I link them together. I need one coin to pay for the linking. I need two of the coins for the remaining tree. There's one coin left over, which I can ignore. So this I uh, can do without any extra coins. Union. Since the union is lazy, I'm actually doing just constant amount of work. Amortized cost out it's constant. Number of trees does not change. Now, if I'm inserting, what happens when I'm inserting? I have work to do to make my new tree. And I need two coins for that tree. That already gives me three for the just making uh, a heap of size with one element. Then I will be calling union. That also costs me one. And OK, so it says zero for linking. This is actually true, but also irrelevant. Because when we insert, we don't actually link. We just concatenate. So far, so good. The actual works of all work and also the actual work for the amortized analysis obviously happens in the delete min. Now let's look at the delete min, and this is where the actual work happens. So the first step in the delete min is actually removing a min. I get the children of, of the minimum. So the minimum is a root of a tree. It has children. Those come into my list of trees. Um, and those are trees that so far didn't have coins. So I have to give each of those two coins. But the good thing is um, this is, was a binomial tree, whatever the minimum was the root of. So it has at most log n children. So I pay two log n coins to those children. Now, 
actual cost of deleting the minimum, um, I can bound in terms of number of trees overall at the very beginning. So this is the trees that I had in the list previously, and plus the trees that are the children of the minimum, plus number of linking operations. Uh, because what I'm doing is I'm going through the list of trees, so that's what I T, I'm throwing it into the array, and then whenever I had a non-empty entry, I have to do a link. So I have extra work then, and that kind of cost propagate. This gives me at most L in terms of the running time. I have T plus L, and then there's an override of O of log N, which covers things like setting the min pointer again, also going from the array back to actual binomial heaps or list. And the array has size log N, the list. I can generate the list in order log N time. So that's all in this O of log term. So that's the actual running time. And now I need to define an amortized running time that is able to cover for the actual cost taking into account that we can use coins that are freed up because there is actually coins that we can use. If we have L links, there are two L coins that are freed up because those trees I'm taking it out. So I have two L coins to distribute. And this actually helps us in the following way. If you look at this T plus L, we can write it as T minus L plus 2L. And T minus L plus 2L is T plus L. Why does that help us? Because those 2L I can cover by the coins that are freed up. I only have to worry about this T minus L. So how big could T minus L be? So T minus L is actually the same as the number of trees at the very end of the delete min. Yeah, because we start with T trees, with every linking operation we remove the tree. So at the end we have T minus L. T minus L is the number of trees at the end, but I know at the end I have a binomial heap, and this binomial heap has log n, um, most log n plus one binomial trees. So that means that this T minus L is actually bounded by log n plus one. What does that mean? Okay, so write it, let's write it again. We have 2L plus log n plus one as the um, actual running time. This means by an amortized cost that covers this O of log n and which covers this log n, so with an amortized cost of O of log n, I can cover for this running time because the 2L is already covered by the coins that I free up. So that was with the accounting method. Let's do potential method next. So for potential method, we again have to start with the potential. It is again as in the amortized analysis of the simple binomial heaps, C times number of trees. This that my C is now larger. Not surprisingly, C I will want to pick as two, or it should be at least two. We check whether we can use potential method. For that, we look at the potential at the beginning. It is zero because we at the beginning we have no trees. And of course, the number of trees is non-negative. The potential never drops below zero, so we can use the potential method. Now we have to look calculate the amortized cost, which are actual cost plus change in potential. Most operations, nothing changes, so make, link, and insert, we don't actually have to look at. Union changes, but um, it gets much simpler. The actual cost is one. Amortized, uh, the change in potential is zero because there are no new trees, so I get an amortized cost of one. The delete min. So this is again where the work happens in the analysis. So the actual cost I can put together um, T plus L. This is the time to add the trees to the array and while that also linking. So I go through all the trees. This gives me T plus every time I link something extra. So then plus A. And all other costs I can bound by or flock in. So meaning at the beginning I remove the minimum, then I get the children, the so children, I have at most lock and children, I will have to put those also into the list of my trees, and I have my T trees. Then I do the algorithm, this is where the T plus L comes in. Then I need to make sure that at the end I again know the minimum, I need to from the array transition to the 
list of binomial trees as a heap. All of that uh, falls into this overflow n. We have t plus l plus overflow n as actual cost. Change in potential can be bounded by c times log n. Log n is a number of new trees. And new trees, why do I have new trees? Those are the children of the minimum, but of those I have at most log n many because the minimum was a root of a binomial heap of size small equal n. So it has at most log n children. So the new trees is, gives me c times log n. And then every link linking operation, link operation gives me Remove that tree so I have minus c times n. Adding up amortized cost ci plus change in potential, actual cost plus change in potential. This is t plus l, the O of log n I have here. So the O log n also absorbs the c times log n factor here, so I have, don't have to worry about it. But I have the t plus l left here and the minus c times l here. But what we see here is this can be bounded by t, I still have that, and then minus l. So plus l minus c times l, if c is at least 2, I can bound by t minus l, and the over block n stays. And now I can argue that this is actually bounded by over block n, because the t minus l is the number of trees at the end, after running the delete min operation, but at the end I have a valid binomial heap. It has only log n many trees, so t minus l is bounded by log n. And again, why is that the case? Because t is the number of trees at the beginning, l is the number of trees that I'm removing, so the number of trees at the end, t minus l. And that is what we wanted to show. So all amortized costs are as claimed. We can fill this table. What we've seen is we've seen all of these operations. The worst case running time, simple amortized analysis, amortized analysis with lazy union. Now, what we did not talk about at all, because binomial heaps don't really do anything with it, is the decrease key operation. Decrease key it simply still has to bubble up or sift up in a binomial heap of potentially size n. So in all of this, decrease key is still order of log n, which is a problem for Dijkstra's algorithm, or at least if we want to speed up Dijkstra's algorithm. So this is something binomial heaps do not improve upon. And for now that we need Fibonacci heaps, which we're going to look at next.